Luke Cage aside, she's the most unbreakable character on Netflix. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 funniest Kimmy Schmidt moments. Before we begin, we publish new videos every day, so be sure to subscribe for more great content. For this list, we're taking a look at the most priceless moments from the first two seasons of Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. You better call Jennifer Love Hewitt and Phil Rizzuto, because you owe a ghost money! Number 10, Birthday Music. Why do you keep playing the same song over and over? These are all different. Can you not tell House from Electronica? Kimmy's 30th birthday party leads to numerous hilarious moments, and Titus's music selections are the icing on the cake. Tired of listening to electronic music, Kimmy asks Titus to play something with words. DJ Titus certainly grants her wish. I can't fix America. Hilarious for viewers, but understandably not great for the vibe of the party. Believe it or not, this is a real tune by X-rated hip-hop artist Johnny Dangerous from 1992. Shocking to think that this song actually exists. But as Titus puts it, he can't fix America. When Kimmy's birthday continues to go downhill, Titus decides to throw himself a pity party with a slower, sadder version of the song. Oh, birthdays, right? I need to get these feelings out. I beat that bitch with a gun. I beat that bitch with a gun. Number 9. The Water Stain this show has no shortage of brilliant one-liners and sight gags, as exemplified by this particular scene. Sorting through some mommy issues, Kimmy talks to a picture of Gina Davis. I'd be all, I don't want to do my homework, Gina Davis! Titus isn't pleased to find her with the autographed photo, which he stole from a dry cleaner. Kimmy argues that she can either confide in Gina or a water stain that looks like a face. Turning around, Titus takes a closer glimpse at the creepy wall stain and becomes so startled that he seemingly mistakes the stain for a robber. Oh my god, what do you want? I'll do whatever you say! As if that's not funny enough, Kimmy suddenly forgets that it's just a stain and panics too. Who sent you? You're not welcome here! <gasps> Number 8, Straight Coach. No. Straight men don't drink through straws! Titus is a proud gay man. When he misses out on a role at his restaurant, however, he fears it's because of his inability to play a straight character. To broaden his acting skills, he seeks out a stern straight coach, played by Dean Norris. Scenario! Two straight men attend a movie. Go! No! You leave a buffer seat! If handled improperly, this subplot could have come off as homophobic or mean-spirited. Yet the dialogue and performances hit just the right notes. Norris in particular scores one hysterical line after another showing Titus how to act straight in a variety of different scenarios. No! First of all, you're drinking beer! And straight men never give any indication they're listening. Although he initially doubts himself, Titus soon finds that he can pass for straight. Best of all, there is no Entourage 2. Thank God. There is no Entourage 2! Number 7, Kimmy's Mom. Baby! A baby! <laughs> Season 2 builds to this pivotal episode where Kimmy reunites with her mom, played by Lisa Kudrow. <laughs> Mommy. It turns out Lori Ann Schmidt is a roller coaster addict and a regular at Universal Studios Florida. Although Kimmy plans on telling her off, she's thrown when Lori Ann immediately monopolizes the dialogue. But when Lori Ann prioritizes Kimmy over her express passes, we discover that Kimmy and her mother have more in common than expected. While it takes them a while to acknowledge the elephant in the room, the mother and daughter eventually have a serious conversation, albeit on a roller coaster. Lorianne Schmidt! I've got some stuff to say to you! Lorianne may not give Kimmy what she wants, but the breakthrough is as poignant as it is funny. Yeah! Number 6, Discipline. The label on your, um, special candy said you'd be much calmer by now. As over the top as this show can get, it frequently addresses relevant topics such as proper parenting and pill popping. Why I'm on it now and I feel great. When it comes to raising children, Jacqueline isn't what you'd call a disciplinarian. Unable to control her son Buckley, she gives him a prescription drug that's cleverly called discipline. Mother, may I please go again? The special candy essentially turns the free-spirited Buckley into a lifeless zombie. After she tries the medication herself though, she quickly finds that discipline eats joy. Discipline ate my joy. Opening her eyes, she disposes of the meds and the two tear a clothing store apart. 
Masked in hilarity, it's a strong statement about over-medication in modern society. Number 5. Cosmetology I just electronic mailed you a video that you've got to watch right away. While Kimmy embraces her new life, fellow mole woman Gretchen isn't sure where to go after escaping from the bunker and winds up joining the Church of Cosmetology. Without the founder, I'd be lost. Keepers H Christmas! Gretchen! Upon learning that Gretchen has dedicated her life to this cult, Kimmy stages an intervention. Kimmy shows Gretchen that she's free to choose her own adventure. But that kind of backfires. Making one impulsive decision after another, Gretchen gets hooked on nose candy and hits rock bottom. As wacky as matters get, Gretchen actually emerges as a complex and even relatable character. In the end, she copes with her post-traumatic stress and takes control of her life by founding her own cult. Sheeps, board the airplane. That's progress, right? Number 4. Fancy Party Outfit Hey, there you are. Just coming down the stairs, as one does when descending is on the menu. Kimmy has all the optimism and good cheer of a Disney princess. And at times, her life can indeed feel like a fairy tale, albeit with a few bizarre twists. Aside from a pair of pants she found in the mailbox, Kimmy has nothing to wear when asked to attend a fancy party. This party is super fancy. And these pants we found stuffed in the mailbox say fancy on the butt. Assuming the role of her fairy godmother, Titus pulls a bibbity bobbity boo Using a shower rug, a toilet chain, and several other household items, he fashions a surprisingly elegant ensemble for Kimmy. It's a true Cinderella moment, complete with mice and birds. I feel like Cinderella. <gasps> and the birds and mice are helping. Of course, they're not nearly as cute as their animated counterparts. It's the kind of magic moment only Kimmy Schmidt could deliver. What are you doing here? Actually, Mrs. Voorhees invited me to the party. Number three, Kimmy's therapist. You got the address? You up, question mark, cartoon eggplant, cartoon eggplant? Where is that, Soho? That wasn't for you. Tina Fey has popped up as a couple of different characters. However, her most memorable appearance has got to be Andrea Baden. When we first meet her, she's a raging alcoholic that stumbles into Kimmy's back seat. Despite vomiting, she gives Kimmy some helpful advice. You say titties? I value my needs, and I needs to take a shower, clean it up. Later revealed to be a psychiatrist, she takes on Kimmy as a patient. As she helps Kimmy get to the root of her problems, Kimmy tries to help her confront her own demons. Throughout season two, we get to see Faye's full range as a comedic performer. Acting as both voice of reason and a voice of insanity, Andrea will have you laughing and thinking simultaneously. No, me baby! Baby, no go night night! Number two, Kimmy in court. Season one culminates in a heated trial where Kimmy confronts her kidnapper, Reverend Richard Wayne Gary Wayne. But the Reverend, played by John Hamm, proves even smoother than Don Draper. And it begins to look as if he'll get off scot-free. Your Honor, I don't have one question for this witness. I have many questions. Of course, prosecutors Marsha and Chris aren't much help either. It's up to Kimmy to prove the Reverend as guilty as sin. She discovers that the Reverend made an audition tape for The Apprentice on June 5, 2006 the day before the alleged apocalypse was supposed to happen. If you really believed the world was going to end the next day, then why in the ham sandwich were you trying to get on next season's Apprentice? Because it was going to be an awesome season. Proving that the Reverend never truly believed the world was ending, Kimmy wins the case and shows the world what she's capable of. You're not bad at math, sir. You're just bad! You never believed in anything! Shut your mouth, Kimmy Schmidt! Before we get to our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. I can never tell if you're trying to help me or destroy me. <laughs> I honestly don't know. <laughs> hey, Kimmy. 1996 called. It wants its clothes back. Hey, Zan. 2090 called. You're dead and you wasted your time on Earth. Uh, oh. Look at that. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely no sun damage, but you've clearly experienced a tremendous amount of stress. Number one, Pinot Noir. No wonder no one's in there. You're scaring away the creeps. The show might be named after Kimmy Schmidt, but Titus Andromedon has emerged as the scene-stealing breakout character. While he's had plenty of classic moments over the past couple of years, nothing can top Pinot Noir. No, we're not talking about the wine. Pinot Noir is the title of Titus's music video, as well as an ode to Black Penis. It's called Pinot Noir. Classy. An ode to Black Penis. The video is every bit as hilarious as it sounds. From the hyper-melody, 
to the uproarious lyrics and Titus's delivery. This song is a laugh riot that you'll definitely listen to more than once. Isn't it just amazing how many words rhyme with Pinot Noir? Pinot Noir, mid-sized car. Oh, Pinot geez. Noir, T. The singing woke up the bats! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and subscribe for new videos every day.